Hello, welcome and thank you for joining us today for the next webinar in our What's New series. In today's webinar, we'll cover some of the newest features in Microsoft 365 that you can implement in your business, as well as covering some brand new features that give us a bit of an insight into the future of where Microsoft is headed. Don't feel like you need to take notes or take it all in straight away, as we'll be sending out a recording of the webinar and a follow up fact sheet later today. Also, if you have any questions, please do feel free to drop those into the Q&A box at the side at any time. I'll do my best to cover those as we go along, but there will, there will also be time for dedicated questions at the end. So let's take a look at what we'll be covering today. In today's webinar, we'll be starting off by looking at a new hybrid working report that includes new data to help organisations and employees thrive with the hybrid workplace. Then we'll be looking at Windows 11 security updates, scheduled sending in Teams chat, Excel Live, we've now got a release date for that, fingers crossed. Um, then we'll be looking at Microsoft Teams calendar scheduling made easier, uh, Microsoft Viva summary of the year so far, just so everyone can keep up with um, some new releases that have been coming throughout this year. And finally, we'll be ending on the Bedrock Security Review Workshop and what's next for following this webinar. So, as always, let's start with a quick introduction and welcome for those of you who may not have joined us before. Um, it is really good to see so many familiar faces coming back again, so welcome back to you guys as well. My name is Jennifer Benj and I am the marketing manager at Bedrock. Bedrock is an IT managed service provider and Microsoft Gold partner. This means that most of the IT we implement is based on the Microsoft stack. This includes Microsoft 365, Teams, Azure, SharePoint, etc. We're also experts in secure, resilient networks and managed IT solutions where high performance is critical. So we, we, we work with organisations that have some of the highest security requirements in the UK. The most important thing we want to achieve, no matter what your organisation does, is to help your business grow better through the use of the technology that you probably already have in place. We do this with the help of our eight rocks. These eight rocks, as you can see on the screen, are data, skills, investment, backup, strategy, security, quality of service, and collaboration. The collaboration rock is the focus of this particular webinar series as Teams and Microsoft 365 are mostly collaboration tools. Many people have Teams and other tools within Microsoft 365 already installed within their business but aren't using them to their full capacity. So that's what we want to achieve through this series of webinars is making sure that you get the best value out of the investment that you've already made in your IT. So kicking off today, I wanted to take a look at Microsoft's new hybrid working report. Obviously, all of this data that's come through this report really relates to the, um, the, the software that we're looking at today with Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams, um, which are tools that allow you to achieve hybrid working within your organisation. Many of us have been working in a hybrid model for a while now. However, months into hybrid work, not everyone agrees on how it's going. Microsoft surveyed 20,000 people in 11 countries and analysed trillions of Microsoft 365 productivity signals, which they are able to do anonymously, so no one's sort of getting tracked in their daily work. Um, and they split these results into three key findings and action points. So starting off with this slide um, and this idea of productivity paranoia. Many leaders and managers are missing the old visual cues of what it means to be productive because they can't see who is at hard at work, um, either by walking down the hallway or past the conference room. And compared to in-person managers, hybrid managers are more likely to say that they struggle to trust employees to do their best work. They also report that they have less visibility into the work that their employees are doing. You can't be working and suddenly have a manager looming over your shoulder if you're at home. And as employees feel the pressure to prove that they're working, their digital overwhelm is in turn soaring. Productivity paranoia risks making hybrid work unsustainable. The strain is clear. On top of an already high, high meeting load, overlapping meetings, so being double booked in your calendars, 
um, increased by 46% per person in the past year. 42% of participants multitask during meetings by actively sending an email or chat message. And don't worry, I won't be offended if you're in fact doing that right now. Um, it's something that we, we, all, we are all guilty of. Um, oh, sorry, just pressed the wrong button there. Uh, jumping ahead of myself a bit. Um, so yeah, productivity paranoia, it's a real thing. How do we combat that? So by taking action, we can combat productivity paranoia. We can set goals like OKRs to ensure that employee work aligns with company goals. Also, you need to establish no KRs or what employees should not be doing in order to get the most critical work done. You don't want to be in a meeting saying this is a priority. No, wait, this is a priority. And people then are, are confused about what they should actually be focusing on. You also need to create and reinforce a work culture that employee it, that rewards employees impact, not just their activity. So don't have people just doing busy work to, for the sake of keeping their team's icon green and looking like they're active. Make sure that you're rewarding their impact of what they're actually achieving. You also need to collect employee feedback regularly at an organisational, organisational departmental and team levels to keep a pulse on what your people are thinking and doing and empower managers and leaders to actively listen, coach and make better decisions to improve the overall performance and well-being of their teams. The second finding in the report surrounds what it takes to encourage people back to the office. While 82% of business decision makers say getting employees back to the office in person is a concern for the coming year, the fact is that most people now expect flexibility and autonomy of how and where and when they work. 73% of employees say that they need a better reason to go into work than just pure company expectations and having their face seen. Connecting with colleagues is a key motivation for working in person in the office. Younger people are especially keen to use the office to establish themselves as part of the workplace community and feel more connected to their co-workers. Younger generations also are particularly looking to connect with the senior leadership and their direct managers in person. So you can see this is shown on, on the graph on the screen now. So one of the, the biggest reasons people want to go into the office is because their work friends will be there and they can catch up in person, or because members of their direct teams will be there and they do feel it's still important to have that face-to-face -face contact to keep that team atmosphere alive. So again, what can we do to take action to build this social connection? You need to use in-person time to help employees build, rebuild their team bonds and networks. Build a digital employee experience to help employees stay connected to each other, to the leadership and to the company culture, no matter where they're working. So that's where the hybrid thing really plays in. You can create this culture even if people aren't always in the office. You also need to create a digital community with modern communication tools to fuel conversation, empower people to express themselves and connect leadership and employees. The final key finding of this hybrid working report is simple. If people feel like they can't learn and grow, they'll leave. 76% of employees say they'd stay at their company longer if they could benefit more from learning and development support. This chart shows the percentages of people across each generation that say they would be prepared to leave a company in order to develop their skills. So you can see it is across all age groups and all levels of the business. What can we do to make sure that we're acting on this um, finding? We need to make learning growth core to the employee experience. That means bringing the right resources and learning experiences into the flow of work to close the skills gap. Recognise that people want opportunities, not just for promotion, but also to broaden their skills. And shift your mindset to create an internal talent marketplace where people can grow their skills, build their careers and find purpose while helping the organisation thrive. So while these aren't sort of things you can implement immediately from a technology perspective in your organisation, I think these do really colour what we're looking at in these webinars that we need to bear in mind as we're all moving into this world of hybrid working or we have been here for some time, we need to make sure that the perspectives of both managers and employees are covered and we're, we're um, utilising this feedback and action points as much as we can. 
So having gone through all that, um, we will start on the technology updates that I've got to cover this month, kicking off with the Windows 11 security updates. Um, so this month, Microsoft announced the general availability of the Windows 11 2022 update. This is the first major update of the operating system since it was launched last year. One of the updates shown on this, which is shown on this slide, is the introduction of smart app control, which prevents employees from running malicious applications by blocking untrusted or unsigned apps. This is great for organisations who are running a, DY, a BYOD policy um, and still haven't perhaps quite mastered their company security policies or don't manage their devices or have unsigned line of business applications. Other features included in the Windows 11 update include enhanced phishing protection and credential guard, making it harder for attackers to compromise your business network. All of the features are available as a free update on Windows 11 devices. So look out for that update because it does contain some really important security things that you, you need to be aware of and get implemented across your workforce if you are using Windows 11. Going back now to the idea of flexible working. Um, many of us are now working early or late because it suits our lifestyles, but you may want to hold off sending certain messages um, or emails or chat messages outside of your colleagues' normal working hours. Microsoft Teams is introducing a new schedule send feature that allows you to schedule chat messages to be delivered in the future. With this feature, you can schedule chat messages so that they will only deliver during your colleagues' normal working hours. You will be able to schedule messages on desktop and mobile, so that it will be released across both of those apps at the same time, as far as we're aware. Um, and all scheduled messages can be edited and deleted before they are delivered. So if you get another update before your message is due to send, you can make any of the necessary changes to avoid confusing people. This update is due in early to late November 2022, so I will talk you through the steps of how to actually use the feature once it's live and once we've got it confirmed that it's it's been rolled out and it's available to you. Next up, um, we've got a quite simple, really. Um, it's one of those why didn't they do this earlier updates. <laughs> um, I like to include these because I think these are the ones, although although they are simple, um, they're the ones that will actually have some of the biggest impact on how we work on a daily basis. So, you know, that feeling when you're creating a Teams meeting, but you have to leave the meeting scheduling window to check a detail such as an attendee's name or perhaps a time that was suggested that everyone can can make. Um, and you have to completely leave the window and then reopen it again later on. And it's a complete pain. Microsoft have finally come up with a solution that stops that annoying back and forth. Um, so they'll be releasing a new feature in Microsoft Teams that will enable you to pop out the scheduling form as a separate window. So you could slide that over to another screen while you're checking the details that you also want to include in that meeting um, and you won't have to close it and reopen it again. Currently, you have to switch back and forth between apps to multitask in the Teams calendar. And this is just going to completely solve that in one fell swoop. As I said, why didn't they do this earlier? Um, this update is due for release in late October or November. So do keep an eye out for that and we'll keep an eye out as well and let you know when, when it's fully released. Hey, here's another feature that we have actually covered in a previous webinar. Um, so I just wanted to give a quick reminder and summary for those who, of you who weren't able to join us then. Microsoft are working towards making all the Office apps more interactive within the Teams environment. This already exists with PowerPoint, where you can use the present in Teams op option to show an interactive version of your presentation within your Teams meeting. Uh, Live Share gives developers the ability to make third party apps beyond passive screen sharing and enables participants to co-watch, co-edit and co-create in Teams. The next app to get this live share functionality is Excel. Until now, you've been able to passively watch updates happening on a spreadsheet uh, during a meeting or open your own version of the spreadsheet and risk missing what everyone else is looking at while you're doing your individual updates. So after sharing access with this new feature, 
everyone in the meeting can edit the Excel file directly from the meeting screen in Teams. The Teams meeting window now becomes a canvas for all participants to work together. Participants can follow the presenter, interact and edit the workbook without ever needing to leave the meeting screen. So you literally do all of this in the Teams uh, meeting window itself. Participants don't even need to have Excel running on their device. So it's as if you're, you've only got Teams running, but you're still using Excel and collaborating on an Excel document with other people in that meeting. So the latest availability update we've had for this is that Excel Live is now due for release mid-October to late November. Um, Microsoft had previously said it would be out in the end of August. So let's, let's keep our fingers crossed that it is not pushed back again, because I think this feature will really have an impact on the ability to share and collaborate um, on Excel files in Teams meetings. It's something that definitely across Bedrock we're looking forward to being released. Um, and I think it will again make a big difference to, to how organisations are able to work together. So yeah, keep our fingers crossed that it will be mid-October to early November, um, but it could, it could slide into later November. We'll wait and see. <clears throat> Finally, um, I wanted to cover some of the updates that have happened across Microsoft Viva this year. So Microsoft continues to add more modules to, Viva, to the Viva suite. Um, and this year alone, we've discussed the addition of Viva Engage, Viva Goals and Viva Sales. So you can look back at past webinar recordings if you'd like to hear about any of those three in particular detail. Um, I'm just going to give a summary of all of the available Viva modules um, right now. Um, we've had a few, uh, well, I've had a few messages from people um, saying they're wondering if they've missed anything they should have implemented already with Microsoft Viva just because these updates have been flying out the door and it's, it is quite difficult to keep up when every update with Microsoft Viva is the next big thing and you're wondering should I have done this already how long has, has this been available and what, what do each of these modules actually do so I just wanted to give a quick overview of what each of the modules is actually for the Microsoft Viva Suite is available as an additional per user subscri uh, subscription on top of your normal Microsoft 365 licensing. Um, only Viva Connections and Viva Engage are currently included as standard with all Microsoft 365 and Office 365 plans for enterprise. So that's worth bearing in mind if you are listening to this and think, yes, I want I want to implement that across my organisation it might not necessarily be included within your standard Microsoft 365 subscription. So you'll need to look into the licensing that you might require for any of these Microsoft Viva packages. Um, so let's start off with Viva Engage. Um, Viva Engage is one of the newer ones. As I said, it's been released this year um, and it's been designed with a Facebook style interface that builds on the current communities app within Teams and Microsoft 365. It allows leaders to share relevant company news and communicate with employees um, and they can then host per, uh, virtual events and add pin conversations and announcements with notifications within Teams, Outlook and Viva Connections. Viva Goals, another of the newer ones, um, is a goal setting and management solution that aligns teams to the organisation's strategic priorities. Um, I think this one is the one I've definitely had the most feedback so far this year that it could be something useful that people want to implement in their organisations, perhaps particularly with the hybrid working that people want to make sure that everyone's on board with the organisation's strategic goals. Um, this helps you to drive results and leads to a thriving business. With Viva Goals, you can connect um, employees to your organization's goals, stay aligned at scale and engage teams by getting them to understand their impact. So again, it's going back to the, that point that we covered earlier on with the hybrid working report, that it's really important that people understand the impact that they're making to the organization as a whole. If you want to keep them engaged and keep them working towards the overall business priorities. Um, the other new one that came out this year is Viva Sales. Um, Viva Sales is a seller experience application that uses Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams to automatically capture, access and register data into any customer relationship management tool. It's designed to help sellers uh, work the way they want without unnecessary context switching and manual data entry. 
So we've all worked with those sales teams who are great at talking with customers and keeping everything on their email, not so great at updating the CRM. And that's what Microsoft are hoping to combat with Microsoft Viva Sales, um, just to make sure that none of that important um, business critical data gets lost along the way. Um, the top four, which have the images on this slide, um, are the ones that got released uh, last year for Microsoft Viva. So there's Microsoft Viva Learning, Viva Topics, Viva Connections and Viva Insights. Um, Viva Learning brings enterprise learning into the flow of work by connecting content from your organisation, learning management systems and third party providers and Microsoft. So there's LinkedIn courses, there's all kinds of other third party courses that you can add into a big dashboard if you think they would um, be useful for your teams to engage in. Viva Topics applies AI to automatically organise content and expertise across your systems and teams into related topics like projects, products, processes and customers. That content appears as topic pages and topic centres. These are created and updated by AI and they enable experts to cultivate and share knowledge with uh, Wikipedia-like simplicity. Uh, Viva Connections is a curated company branded experience that brings together relevant news, conversations and resources in the applications and devices you use every day. And finally, Viva Insights helps improve productivity and well-being through data driven, privacy protected insights and recommendations. So that's the one that you can use to see overall what people within your company are prioritising their time on. Are they spending all of their time in one to one meetings or team meetings or perhaps doing lots of solo work? Um, and it gives you a again, it's anonymous because of the data is as a whole, but it just gives you an idea of what the organisation is kind of up to um, when you can't necessarily see them all in one office space. So that's everything we had new to cover today. I just wanted to quickly refer back to um, Bedrock's new security review workshop, um, which is our one day interactive workshop where you'll work with one of the Bedrock technical team to analyse the security features that you already have in place and find the holes where attackers could still possibly find a way in. During the course of this workshop and follow up reports, you will discover where you could be duplicating investment in cybersecurity tools that are doing the same job as ones you've already got. Um, check that you're meeting requirements for your cyber insurance policy, which um, um, most or many of the cyber insurance policies won't pay out unless you monitor and manage the um, your cyber security properly and prove that you're doing your part. Um, you can also find out where the cracks are in your technology environment that leave you open to attack. We do have a limited number of spaces opening for this workshop each month. Um, I know a, a few people already jumped on this last month, so they'll be receiving the information that they need to, um, to do that very soon. If you would like to hear more about the security review workshop, we will have a web page to share on this very soon. Um, and you can also just pop me a reply email to the recording that I'll be sending out later today and we'll be happy to share more information with you. OK, we've got a bit of time now for some Q&A and I can see that we have already got one in here, so um, I'll cover that first. Um, does Excel Live require SharePoint for storage of the file? Um, it does require it for the person who's actually sharing the, the Excel themselves. So everyone else who's collaborating on it, they don't necessarily need to have that on, on their devices. Um, but yeah, it, it works through SharePoint. Um, so most of the, the files that you're accessing via Teams, um, they're actually sitting in SharePoint. So that's where the actual um, the document that you're collaborating on would need to sit to allow you to do that new collaboration feature. Um, as soon as it's out, we will definitely um, go through that again in more detail, just because I think it will, it will be a bit of a game changer. Um, oh, thanks very much, Ben. <laughs> um, good to see you again, back again and look forward to seeing you again next month as well. So, um, yep, happy to help <laughs> with uh, anything that we can do. Um, also, if you can't think of a question right now, but something occurs to you later today when you perhaps um, see the recording or, or get the fact sheet, um, please do feel free just to email me with any questions that have, have occurred or if you'd like to find out further information about something. Or perhaps if you've heard about something um, that you, is possibly coming up that's a new release from Microsoft that we haven't already covered and you'd like to see covered in more detail, 
um, just let me know and we would be happy to cover any of the topics that you, you'd like to hear more about. Um, as I said, many, many people are already using these tools, but there's so many updates and new releases coming out all the time that it's impossible to stay on top of it. So that's what we're aiming to do with this webinar series to help you out a bit. Um, Cara has shared in the chat um, box at the moment, there is a link there if you would like to join us again for our next webinar in this series. Um, so that will be taking place in November. Um, so if you would like to join us again on the 3rd of November, please do feel free to click on that link in the chat and sign up there the same as you did to, to get to this one. And we'll be very pleased to welcome you back again to give you an update on all the new features that will be released throughout the rest of this month. Um, and we'll be talking about those on the 3rd of November. Um, <clears throat> Someone has asked classification or clarification on the Viva product and what needs a license would be handy. Yeah, I, I actually agree. And I think probably the best idea would be if we put together some kind of fact sheet about that. Um, because it is, you know, it's, it's very hard to keep up with all of these new releases coming out all the time. So what we'll do is um, I think hopefully within the next month we'll have time to put together a fact sheet that just covers all seven of those new Viva modules. Um, what they encompass and what kind of licensing you might be looking at if you wanted to implement those in your business. Um, so as soon as we have that available, um, I will definitely let you know and have that available to share for free, obviously. Um, so thanks for that suggestion. Um, yeah, anything else like that, just let me know. And really good to see everyone again. Uh, thank you very much for all your feedback. And we look forward to seeing you again in November. So thanks very much, everyone, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.